Welcome to The Apprentice, you're fired. Just two weeks to go in this year's battle to be Lord Sugar's business partner. Tonight, we'll be casting an eye over the five who are still in with a chance of securing his £250,000 investment and saying goodbye to Mr Monaco. This is turning out to be an extraordinary series of The Apprentice. In week eight, we had the first abdication of a project manager. Last week, our first Welsh candidate bowed out. And most extraordinary of all, this week, the ladies' team won a task. <laughs> we never thought we'd see the day. Let's meet our panel who can hardly contain themselves. Retail entrepreneur Sarah Curran, Paralympian Adia Depitan, and comedian Hugh Dennis, welcome to your fart. Tonight's task of starting a retail business from scratch led to one candidate being scratched from Lord Sugar's plans. Miles, I'm not sure what your expertise is, and this is simply from a gut feeling. I'm not sure in you either. And for that reason, I have to say that, Miles, you're fired. Thank you very much, guys. I've learned a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, please, actually, do you know what? I kind of find slightly um, intimidating. Hang on one second, something I want you to do. Hang on, sorry. <laughs> please welcome... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miles Mordaunt. <laughs> Mild, like the way my ripped, uh, my tie goes underneath my ripped uh, and then comes out the other end of my ripped. Uh, it's quite, quite a look. You're looking very suave, by the way. You're looking very tailored. Thank you As very ever, much. by the way. You've brought a style and a panache and a general good tailoring to the show, which we often can't rely on. I think I saw a few comments. I think Dapper Undertaker was one, and <laughs> the bloke who's just popped out for a fag at a wedding a few times. Yeah, is it? <laughs> That's probably a good thing, yeah. It is a surprise for many, by the way. I'm sorry, I'm just going to get rid of this. Uh, <laughs> I wish you were so easy to get. Um, it is a surprise for many of us, in some ways, that you're here. Uh, I mean, I'm gutted. You know, I, I think I... I enjoyed the process. I tried to keep my head low at the start and go through and just, you know, be myself. I tried to be positive energy the whole way through. And I think that, um, surprised to go out, I guess, I really wanted to try and be in final five. It's almost, you, as a candidate, you feel like you've fallen at the, the kind of the last hurdle. Yeah. I think there was a real momentum behind wanting to get into that, uh, that final five. It's really symbolic. OK. Um, I say it's a surprise, and it was for many people we spoke to, that you didn't make that final five. Not a surprise, by example, if you watched the episode. Not a surprise <laughs> in any way. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Really? I'll really limit it to just that episode. You could probably go back the week before. <laughs> no, as well. but specifically, I have to say this week, man, within five minutes, one of the men was going home. That was fairly, <laughs> that was yeah. pretty clear. Let's relive your performance on this task. Have, have you guys made a decision? Miles? Um, if we get something that doesn't sell, we've had it. The ceramic notepad, definitely. Yeah, the yeah. butter dish. These expensive, are they? What? I'm saying to you, 11.50. I think it's quite expensive. Mm. How many items did you have on your store? What have we got? 16 items. Right. Three blokes, one stall, 16 items. Hello, mate. Some gift ideas in ceramic. Hello, they're a bit of fun ceramic here. Don't really want to know, do they? First of a depth of stock. Otherwise, you can't smell what sells. One day only, lit London designers. Gift ideas. I don't think the shop looks brilliant, does it? It looks awful. I I'm not sure whether you got the plot here about this particular task. So, right from the start, you know, you were kind of playing catch up a bit right from the start, because once you had 16 pieces of unusual. Iconic, I believe, is the term used. Iconic <laughs> ceramic uh, on, on stage, and it just seemed from there on in, you were always losing. By that stage in the process, I think on reflection, you f I was c you're carrying baggage, mm. so I'm worrying about what Neil's thinking the whole time because Neil had, you know, he's been fantastic throughout, and he's got brownie points with Lord Sugar, and you worry that when you're in the boardroom, that he's going to listen to him. I think the other thing, you're also carrying baggage from other episodes, so. If we choose a supplier here and it's too long to get back and we start, you start making all these decisions of becoming indecisive because you're worrying about too many other things, what you actually need to do is just crack on, follow your gut, and gut instincts and manage it like you would anything else. And I think that was my failure. I was 
trafficking too much in my head. It's, so it's not like the Monaco thing to have shops with nothing in them. That's like a <laughs> cool Euro chic statement at the moment. Well, yes, we have a butter dish. We, we so what? Uh, <laughs> maybe you want to buy the butter dish. Maybe you don't want to buy the butter it's dish. It's a very minimalist care. approach. Very we, minimalist. Yeah, I feel that's you really erred on the side of minimalism <laughs> yeah. in this particular task. Now, listen, you've said you, you, you're an online retailer, obviously, is what you are at the moment, Sarah. But you, yeah. you started as um, in, in just in, in terms of setting up your own boutique. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I started... you know retail from this. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and I think it was for me, it was quite obvious that you actually didn't have a strategy um, because you didn't really look at the marketplace where you were, price point, passing trade. Um, and also there wasn't a real experience on your stall. So it wasn't very enticing to come to. But there were many moments of very itchy, scratchy. I really felt for you because I think you were at that point, you were just lost. Yeah, I think I don't think I released my inner Dell boy in this one. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jim, some people, people have, a, have a natural audience, you know, that they're working with. Your natural audience, I feel, is on a yacht rather than <laughs> rather than in a market stall in these days. I, I think. I mean, I think it's a fair comment. And actually, if you look back, I shouldn't have put myself forward as project manager on this. I Can mean, I ask why did you do mm. that? Do you know why? Actually, and it, again, it comes back to where you are in the process. Neil had been project manager, I think, three times. Jordan twice. It was my natural time to do. It. Yeah. And again, carrying the fear that you go into the boardroom and it turns into, why weren't you project manager? That's a but, stupid decision. That's not the right decision to yeah. have made. But isn't the game to actually choose the right time to, to, for when to be the project manager? And I feel you, you hit the nail on the head where you say you were carrying baggage from the week before, yeah. where you made that mistake um, when, when Alex went out with the food and the skull and crossbones and stuff, and then you didn't trust your decisions. And what you should have done is, as you said, you know, just think of the now and not what happened Jordan the made the perfect comment. He would have been a perfect project manager and Neil and I could focus on Probably the other stuff. Yeah. I think that would have been the best solution. Do you I know mean, what? I well, I think you got wrong, though. I mean, there was something about the products and there was something about, the, you know, the, the positioning and all the rest of it. What everybody always gets wrong, they don't look at Karen. She's there, she's another member of the team. <laughs> you, if you turned round when you were buying things and you looked at Karen, you saw her going... <laughs> <laughs> the game is so much easier. You go, here's a butter dish, you quickly turn around, she's going... <laughs> We are getting to the stage of the process where the candidate's business ideas are coming to light, and Jordan's caused some confusion and surprise. I'm not the software engineer, I'm the strategy sales marketing, it's not me alone. There is another person who... So there's three of you in this partnership? Yes, yeah. <laughs> if and when an investment is made, then th those... Does those discussions happen? But the honest truth is that what I'm discussions happen? Discussions about percentages and how it would split between me and my uh, business. No discussion here, mate. We get 50-50 shares. I'm a, I'm a safer investment than safer anyone else. Safer investment? Can... What bleeding world do you live in? A tech start business? Lord, sure, let me explain myself. They're the most, they're the most because... risky bloody investments on this planet. <laughs> Suddenly, Jordan is a mystery partner. You must be sitting there going, I mean, you're, we saw your, you know, your eyes go, what, what's going on here? It, uh, it, it kind of, it, it made it a bit strange in the boardroom, actually, because, I mean, it wasn't natural for me to probably get into cat fights in those situations, but, I mean, I think week nine was my first time in there, and it was all a bit of an eye-opener, and I don't know where that might have gone, but funnily enough, it sort of slightly took the steam out of it from our side, because we all thought, he's probably going to go here. Um, you know, that yeah. all sounds like Lord Sugar because I'm just not going to touch it with a barge pole, so I must have been really bad that I went. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it turns out, like, and, and presumably we'll find out more when they go in and do the business plan, so if it turns out and say, who is his partner, and, and Jordan rustles under the table and brings about, a, like, a glove puppet of himself, <laughs> and go, it's little Jordan. What's that, little Jordan? <laughs> what, that? You, you want to go into business? <laughs> oh, I think we're going to business, little Jordan, you and me. <laughs> or his dog, or, like, a twin, like a female female twin, or something really, really weird that would be no less surprising than suddenly presenting them at this point. I mean, this was, this is a bit of a shock. I mean, that is, that would be one big shock. And in fairness, he should have just kept quiet. Or he could have almost died in the boardroom, which is well, the other thing well, he tried to do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought he kept his secret business partner inside him, and he was just going to come out. You know, that was it. I'm coming out. Save me. Save me. I want the money. Yeah. What if it actually is Peter Andre? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
<laughs> That'd be terrifying. It's a hell of a twist to be built up to this. Yeah. Comes in singing insanely uh, <laughs> in the middle of the interviews. Was he? Was, he, was that? He was actually going to be sick, was he, as opposed to coughing? I, I don't know, maybe in terms of suppress a cough that then became like a vomit, uh, or <laughs> it was one of these kind of That's weird things. Weird. It was just, it was the worst time, it was like the finger was yeah, already yeah. up, <laughs> and then he's like... Oh. <laughs> So you know what to do next time, don't you? Next time, if Alan Sugar's nearly pointing the <laughs> point finger at you, you start... Oh, yeah, go. Oh, 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 oh. You carry on, Alan Sugar. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, I've made a quick recovery. That's great. Uh, I'm, I'm back in the game. Conspiracy theorist, either, but do you think there's something in the fact that the two remaining men have both got beards a bit <laughs> like Alan Sugar? <laughs> <laughs> I know you'd have to go back to all of the people who wanted to find out how many of them had beards a bit like Alan Sugar's and to what extent that subconsciously <laughs> yeah. works. Okay. Oh, yeah, so I recognise myself in you. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying the women have no chance? Well, I think possibly one of them should grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> but she arrives there with a, what, what? Uh, this, I've always had this. Uh, I'm just a magician with makeup. Um, before Lord Sugar got to Neil's business plan, there was one lingering doubt he wanted to address. Neil, can I ask you a question? You're one trick pony as far as sales. My main skill, Lord Sugar, lies in sales. I'm not shying away from that. But I've had a record breaking task when I've led a team and proved that I can do different things. And I also believe I've got a business plan that will bring us a fruitful return. What I've is that business plan? It's an online um, estate agency business, which I've actually researched now for a year and a half. The competitor that I'm going up against made £80 million profit last year. I know that I've got a plan that can compete with that and also will actually. That'd be a bloody good plan, Neil. Listen, Lord Sugar, I take that on board, but I believe that I would be the perfect partner for you, Lord Sugar. What we missed there is a bit where he went, innovation, creation, operation. <laughs> I thought he was going to go to a nursery, I thought he was going to go ipa dipa <laughs> 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 It would be nice if, if yeah. Eddie just stood back and go, let's see how many he has. Yeah. Uh, action, reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jordan sitting beside him going, medication! <laughs> 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 Without knowing too much of the details, how does Neil's business plan sound? Well, you know, everyone thinks when you go online, um, suddenly millions of people are going to find your website, and it's just simply not the case. So without really knowing the sort of detail behind his plan... Um, the thing with Neil is that he's quite a steady guy. Um, there's something about his mannerism and the way he works that I, I do like. He doesn't sort of tend to sort of, you know... Not great sparks, but, you know, he's consistent. He's, he's a man of the people, like, he's very good at engaging with people, sort of general public or whatever it might be. Yeah. He's, people warm to him, they take to him, and I think... Yeah, we always had this joke, I mean, I was a bit like the sort of overdressed tosser trying to sell a caravan. <laughs> and, 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 and Neil's there, sort of fully supplied, teachered up, and... and but, <laughs> you know, can, can, very good with people, and they but do that's take such an to him. essential skill in Absolutely. Business. You know, that's a very important skill. Absolutely, and but I think... Even in an online business, or do you... Yeah, are you putting, absolutely. Are you putting yourself at a disadvantage? Well, sometimes even more so, because, you know, you, you are virtual, but then your customer's virtual. You have to find another way of, of connecting with them and creating this... a reason for them to come to your site. Neil, has Neil impressed you? Yeah, I think he has. He's, he's a hardcore salesman. He's a, a, a top, top business guy. But, I mean, I wouldn't want to play Monopoly against him, you know, because every week he's telling everybody about how much he sells and how much he buys. He would just grind you into the ground. But, you know, he has got those communication skills. He's, he's got a balance between being able to sell and he kind of warms the people as well. Yeah. He's, he delivers quite a good mission statement he on does, behalf yeah. of Neil Clough. I mean, he has yeah. almost a Neil Clough Neil house Clough. style to a certain extent. Yeah. That's what Neil Clough <laughs> does. Neil Clough does that. He delivers, yeah. I was asked you that, and I did it, and that's what Neil Clough does. <laughs> <laughs> essentially how he's delivered all those things. All throughout yeah. the show, there's a bit where Neil and Clough And he's backed yeah. himself the whole way, but you can't knock him because he's delivered. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, uh, through all the discussion of things that have worked or didn't work, we, there's one thing we can't take from you, which is that you are ripped! You are ripped, Miles. Let's have another look at you. In your... <laughs> I'm just... Oh, Miles is incredibly fit. I thought if you see him in the gym downstairs, blinking act is ridiculous. <laughs> Mr. Monaco seems to like to show off his abs uh, quite a lot. I'm too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. So sexy. Mr. Sixpack, he is in good shape. But... And I am too sexy for Milan. Do you call him Mr. Baby Oil? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I didn't think bodies like that existed, bloody hell. No, it's just me to shame, I'll tell you that now. <laughs> Listen, listen, enjoy it, enjoy it. For God's sake, you're in basketball. What are you, are you 39 now? I'm 40 now. You're 40 actually. now, yeah, I'm so. 41. The next year is really tough. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just get the benefit out of it now, you know, because <laughs> when it goes, it's a, it surprises you. Uh, it, turns uh, yeah. it just turns like that. Yeah. Literally, you go, you go, happy. <laughs> 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 that was great while it lasted. Uh, impressive, you know, I mean, a Paralympian, a bronze medal winning Paralympic no, you, athlete. You're in good shape, Miles, you're in good shape. Your training regime must be, must be pretty hardcore. And you look like a, a modern day Simon Templar, man. You should be getting into, into the movies. <laughs> The, uh, no, it's a, uh, it's, it's, I mean, I like, the one on the wheel, I'm particularly impressive. I, uh, I can do the initial bit down, but then you're down. <laughs> and then you're holding a wheel and you're going, this is not going to go anywhere. Uh, why don't I climb back up again and we'll start, oh, no, no, here we go again. <laughs> I seem to have found myself back down here, like, you know, that, that's it's impressive. There's a terrifying thing in that particular exercise, that somebody's just going to take your legs and kind of wheel you around like a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very good. <laughs> well, you're not expecting it. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. <laughs> All right, in this process earlier on, by the way, you did seem very in control, very competent, very assured about the whole thing. They were it's sort of, not that it ran out of steam, per se, but mistakes began. I mean, you could go back to Task 7 in the caravan. Uh, you spent a very pleasant hour and a half talking to one old man about caravans uh, who <laughs> asked you every question. That time you'll never get back. Uh, <laughs> can I bring you on to this, then? Because you are a parent. The, uh, a bad one, apparently. It wasn't implied that you're a bad parent. I think you're... it was clearly implied by Alex I was. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, this, looking back... I think that the, the demographic we were after, we were, we were pitching for people that did want to kill their kids. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, honestly, you're not going to believe this, but when we were looking at that, they're smiling skulls. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, would you have uh, deadly dinners? What do you think of it? Listen, I can understand <laughs> what you were trying to do. You were trying to appeal to the kids, mm. and then, you know, that pester sort of influence. Um, I just think there was a line, and you just kind of went over it. And, the, yeah, the two skulls kind of... <laughs> as, as a mum, you know, you, your instinct is warning. Like, skull, I understand no. that. Yeah. Look, I think pester power is a massive thing, and, and, and but we needed to tie that up with a sensible... Yeah. See, it all makes me fun. feel terrible uh, as a parent because I would have bought it. It's <laughs> 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 great. Yeah. They're going to love that. <laughs> OK, Miles, uh, brace yourself as we hear what Lord Sugar and your former colleagues have to say about you. Alarm bells started to ring last week in the Ready Meals task when Miles targeted the wrong type of customer. However, this week, as project manager, he completely lost the plot by not stocking the stool and the shop properly. I think Miles is a great guy, but sadly, I think it was really weak project management from him right from the start. I was actually quite surprised by Miles' as project manager uh, that he was a bit indecisive. This task was designed to show me who can build a business from scratch, taking things back to basics. Miles wasn't able to do that, and that's why he had to go. Are they fair comments? Oh, I think definitely on this task, for sure, yeah. Um, I mean, building a business from a market stall, I probably, I think we've established I'm not the bloke. No, no, um, no that's fair enough. But I guess I have built businesses from scratch before, but um, no, I mean, I take away lots of things from that, and. I think they were fairly nice comments, to be fair, considering what they could have said. I mean, you know, I think I did get on well with them, and I think there was respect amongst us all. So, um, yeah, I think it was fair. OK, now let's bask in the triumph of Louisa, Francesca and Leah. We have so totally something to prove to those stupid boys. Do we go for fashion? Yeah. Fashion. Go for quantity. Yeah. Stack them high, sell it cheap. She made sure she had a real mug's eyeful of stuff on that store. We have got some great items for you. Thank you. We may as well invest the money that we've got into more stocks. Smell what sells. Get the black and white headbands. Yeah. Go, go, go. Five of these and four of these. Nice look, isn't it? And a great price. Thank Five pounds. Twenty pounds. I know you're on the job, but we've got berries for a fiver. She is a retailer, and she's doing well. Total assets, £809. Final five. Very well done on this task. Final five and three I know. are women. Yeah. 
It was an impressive performance. I mean, and even selling to the police, when obviously the thing the police need is a wipe clean ceramic notepad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Marigold, I thought. The marigold. They could slap somebody with the marigold yeah. to challenge them and then write down their response onto the white. At least they acknowledged her. We walked, they walked past us and blanked us. Well, they <laughs> checked you out because they thought it was kind of a creepy thing that you were dragging people <laughs> into the back of the empty box. No wonder the cops are hovering around you uh, for the length of it. It was an impressive performance. Yeah, I think what was, what was great is, um, you know, they, they took a risk when they had the, the, the shop, uh, went out, bought a high-priced item, the dresses, didn't sell, um, but then went back and just kept on buying volume of what was selling. Um, I think they had a great strategy. They worked really well as a team. Um, but, you know, they had one thing in common, which was, you know, fashion and hats, and it was, yeah. Yeah, they, they absolutely that. understood what they were selling, didn't they? Yes. And also knew exactly what their strengths were, because it is very... If somebody puts on a hat, you can generally go, oh, you look great. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got a white, clean ceramic board. It's very difficult, <laughs> isn't it? Well, how can you compliment someone on that? You can't. So they yeah, used did, did you consider stuff. dressing? Because they wore, they wore the leggings, they wore the dresses, and they wore the hats. And sometimes they were wearing a pair of leggings under the dress with a hat on. Right? It was, they were living the brand. They were, just, oh, they were all about the brand. Absolutely. At no point did you drape candles over yourself <laughs> uh, and, and go, buy this, onto a white clean thing that you dangled off your chest. I'm just saying you missed an obvious opportunity. That's where wrong. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Clearly you missed the boat in that one. The, uh, uh, Louise was given a stare and talking to last week. Has that had an effect? Yeah, I think so. I think she's, she's definitely evolved. In, in the um, in the process, and she, I, I think she's uh, she's got that combination of being a hard saleswoman, but also she can um, communicate, and I think that's what the biggest part of this whole process is being able to communicate and to get the best out of the rest of your team. And it's nice to see that her and Francesca are getting on this week as well. Okay. Now, as we're nearing the end of Lord Sugar's search for his new business partner, we thought it'd be a good idea to find out what happened to last year's winner, Ricky Martin, who is with us tonight. Hello, Ricky. Lovely to see you again. How are you? Are you well? I'm well, thanks. Yourself? I'm fine. Thank you very much, <laughs> Ricky. No one asks. Uh, <laughs> very, very polite. Right. I'm looking for a job in the science area, though. Can you get me in? I've got the perfect job for you. We're expanding. Lovely stuff. Fantastic. <laughs> As am I, constantly. Uh, now, <laughs> before we hear what you've been up to, let's take a look at a clip from Your Hard 2012 showing how you went on a bit of a journey yourself through the process. Here you are now in the final four. Classifying yourself as Thor in the Nordic pantheon. Is that right? His personal statement and application form is so absolutely laden with superlatives about himself. Best business partner on the planet. However, I read your business plan and I was quite impressed. It was interesting. I think it was well written. A cogent business plan, a sensible business plan. He's the one has changed the most through the process. When I turned up to this process, I had a lot of bravado about me, and I'm a very different person now. I think I'm somebody who's channeled his whole career to the point we're at right now, sitting opposite you at this boardroom, ready to get my business started. <laughs> You and the £250,000 investment who set up a recruitment firm in the science sector. How is all that going? It's, um, it's been the busiest year of my life. Um, it's, the company's going well. Um, I think the reality of The Apprentice is a great platform to get a new business started. Fantastic, but actually the hardship is when you've actually got the investment and you've got to go to market. You might have done well in a process, but actually the real world is a completely different thing. Um, but the business is going very, very well. We've grown bigger than I expected. We've moved to a position now where we're profitable month on month. Um, and actually, I need another three members of staff from the science sector, so I'm looking. So, yeah, all good. Okay, well, you work in recruitment. You should be able to find them. That's <laughs> <laughs> Of all people, that seems like a basic test. Wow. Uh, <laughs> if, only, if only there was another science recruitment company that we could go <laughs> to get the people to work for my science recruitment yeah, company. Boy, yeah. And how hands-on is, is, is Lord Sugar? He's relatively hands-on with the business. He gives me a lot of advice. In fact, he comes to me more saying, Ricky, what can I do more for the company, more than me going to him? So I'd say to anyone, he's a fantastic asset as a business person, and he's really helped me to, to kind of catapult my business probably three, four years quicker than I would have if I did it completely on myself. And how many people have you... Well, firstly, how many people are you employing yourselves? At the um, so I'm employing seven, so it's me and seven others. OK, and are you still wrestling? No, I've given that up. Let's go. <laughs> although, although I've got a space for Miles, so he can take over from me. <laughs> he would destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Monaco, uh, come in on a speedboat. Uh, you're fantastic in a Formula One car. It's brilliant. Listen, good luck with the work. Uh, congratulations, you. Ricky Martin. Thank you. 
This year, it's Francesca, Louisa, Leah, Jordan and Neil who will be fighting for Lord Sugar's £250,000 investment. So we asked Wimbledon fans who they'd like to see in the final. I would like to see Leah in the final because she's very consistent and she's been doing all her work properly. I think Leah's very clever. A good brain. Leah's probably been the standout candidate for me. He's a good leader and he gets the job done. I would really like to see Francesca in the final, I think. She's been she's been quite good throughout. I, I think Louisa just <laughs> a good competition. She's got a lot of skill. She works the angle. She works the people very, very well. I, I think Jordan's proved that um, he's a very good manager. Go, okay, Jordan. Woo! Yeah, Jordan. <laughs> so we may conclude that Leah is a very good finalist <laughs> and Neil should be the apprentice. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> Clearly. Clearly, they should all be fired and just hire that small Indian kid. He's brilliant. <laughs> How fantastic is he? If you want to know more about these candidates, there's a special programme called The Apprentice The Final Five, which goes out next Monday night at 9 pm on BBC One. Back to you, Miles, however, because it's time for the vote. Uh, Sarah, do you think Lord Sugar was right to fire Miles? <clears throat> Miles, I'm sorry to say it, but I do, on this occasion, think he made the right decision. Addy? Miles, you've got skills, great abs, but I think uh, Lord Sugar made the right decision this week. Hugh? Um, well, I, Miles, I love you. I think your name makes you sound like one of the knights of the round <laughs> table, which <laughs> I particularly like. Um, but I think he was right, yeah. We're going to go to the audience. If you agree with Lord Sugar, hold up fired, but if you disagree, hold up hired. It is fired. My, my, you're cold and tough. <laughs> As <laughs> crowd, yeah. Fired it is. Miles, we've been admiring you for 10 weeks and we wanted to give you something that reflected our belief in your innate class uh, and also the fact that you live in Monaco amidst the Euro chic and the very finest of living. And we're going to go, what possible luxury good can you give the man who appears to have everything? And we, we racked our brains. So we, you know, I think we're doing pretty well, actually, to be honest. I think you'd be quite really? proud. I think you'd be quite <laughs> proud to walk around Monaco in a T-shirt that says, I went back to England to be on The Apprentice and all I got <laughs> was this nice T-shirt. <laughs> and on the back it says, do you want to buy a caravan? <laughs> Miles Mordant, you made it to the final six. Here are your highlights. Don't stir that, though. Miles, is these are bonds. <laughs> Even on the beer task, he wanted the beers shaking and stirring. <laughs> Miles has got the nickname of Mr Monaco. Every time you ask him a question, he refers it back to, ooh, we don't do that in Monaco. Caravans are banned in Monaco. Mr Monaco. Mr Monaco. I'm Miles. <laughs> That's the response I was really hoping for. He is calm, confident. Charismatic, cool, he's hot. What are we talking Everyone has a good side, and until they feel that they're worth it, it's a nice place to Made by our own fair hand with passion. We love the product, we really, really do think that. I don't mind making a fool of myself in front of anyone. I really, really love the guy. He's just a dream. Have you won every single task? Yes, I am the lucky charm. Very happy to be here with you. Yes. Yeah. Listen, if it doesn't work out, I'm getting a market stall. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miles Morgan. And that's it from us for tonight. Thank you to all of my guests. Go to our website at bbc.co.uk forward slash apprentice for Matt Edmondson's awkward conversations with the fired candidates. It's also where you'll find details on how to apply to be Lord Sugar's business partner in 2014. It's a fantastic opportunity for anyone with a great business idea who wants to be in with a chance for a £250,000 investment. So please give it a go. Next week, the final five face Lord Sugar's four inquisitors, but who will be in the running for that ultimate partnership? What would you do with this? <clears throat> I have this ability inside me that I don't even at times know what to do with. That's crap. I can't see it working like this. You can't turn over profit. This is disappointing. You should know that. What's your plan B? Yeah, she was an idiot. I might as well put that £250,000 into a slot machine. It's a very bad idea. Don't compare yourself to Lord Sugar. It don't make sense. It's just farcical. I'd rather give birth again than do this.
you can leave now. It's really, really good. Honestly, I can't wait for you to see it. We'll see you at the same time next Wednesday. Good night.